everyone welcome to our inspiring thoughts podcast we're very lucky uh, this time to have maria wilson on with us who's saxon hr consultancy uh, maria it's great to have you on board on the podcast today thank you Stephen. it's great to be here as well thank you for inviting me that's all right. And we've already had a, Maria and I have had a good chat before. We, I think we're going to be talking for a bit today because we're very passionate about our subjects and we work in. So um, uh, I'll try and keep us on track, but we probably might go off uh, and talk a bit longer, <laughs> Maria, if that's all right. That's fine. But there's probably a risk of that happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Maria, welcome. And we're going to talk today about um, uh, I saw on LinkedIn and you put out and you've been working really hard around five steps of employee engagement, which we're going to touch on in a moment. And that links in with uh, us as an organisation looking at mediation, leadership and modernising HR policies. Really, really key about employee engagement. So before I go into the questions, would you just tell our audience about your career history? Yeah, sure. Um, so I've been working in HR for 24 years now. Um, I started off before that as a PA uh, for an employment solicitor, actually. And that's where I got my interest in the employment law, employment tribunals, you know, conflict resolution, uh, just policies, procedures, investigations, that kind of thing. Um, and then I really wanted to move into an in-house HR department to kind of learn from the other side. Uh, I worked, I think it must have been about 18 months perhaps work for a recruitment company in their HR department and then I got this fantastic opportunity and I'd applied just sent my CV off and got a fantastic opportunity to join as the stores um, as a HR manager so massive learning curve but it was absolutely fantastic the best training I've ever had um, and for the first three months of my employment um, myself and other newly appointed managers went to what they called a store of learning uh, and you literally just learnt from the ground up, uh, you know, so I was stacking shelves, I was uh, in the warehouse, I was on checkouts, you know, seeing customers fighting over Brussels sprouts at Christmas time, you, you know, we saw, we saw all of that, we heard all of that, unfortunately. Um, but then, you know, I was there for four years, I think, and then worked in hospitality, worked for a couple of hotel chains, did a regional role, um, worked for the NHS after I had my son, because obviously I couldn't travel the country. So I, I took sort of a little sidestep in my career and worked in the NHS as a senior HR advisor um, and was promoted twice whilst I was there over those seven years. Um, and from the NHS, again, another challenging kind of yeah. uh, industry. Yeah. I worked in care, social care and complex yeah. care, more recently as a, a HR director for a complex yeah. care company based in London. Um, and uh, October of last year, I took the huge plunge and set up my yeah. own consultancy business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's my story, really. <laughs> No, it's and it's um it's really nice that about a broadness of understanding like with Asda the shop floor yeah. um, and developing so you can then when you talk to colleagues you understand what's going on uh, and I think when we we talked off air that you you said HR isn't just sitting behind a desk the the, the actual right. true HR you believe is out and about really being there Absolutely. with the colleagues and working with them isn't it. Yeah, it's having that visibility and building that trust and that rapport with employees, if not just with managers. I think sometimes the perception of HR is that you're there for the company. Yes, you're employed by the company. And now as my consultancy, I'm employed by the client. But what I always say to my clients, it's about doing the right thing. You yes. know, if I see something that's not right or a decision that you would like to make as a client, that's all right, I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to yeah. tell you that this is yeah. not appropriate. I was having the exact conversation with a client this morning that I met a prospective new client yeah. and he said that's great because that's how I want to work yeah. um, so it's about building that trust and that rapport and really understanding the challenges that an organization has yes. from the ground up um, and you know employees will speak to you in HR often yeah. they see HR as kind of a bit distant and not yeah. very visible I've been the complete opposite to that and I would encourage all HR practitioners to get on the shop floor as I still call it yeah. talking to employees building that rapport simple hello how are you how is your weekend yeah. you know it just builds from there really and you know it's it's a mistake that a really really big mistake that a lot of managers directors people in leadership sort of teams don't do and that's talking to your employees and really getting yeah. to know them 
but they, they, there becomes a gulf, doesn't it? They it lose does, yeah. sight. So yeah. when vision values come down, the employees go, we did not actually portray yes. what you say. So, no, I definitely relate to that, yeah. Um, yeah. especially from my world in the banking industry prior yeah. to the conflict resolution. I can definitely, definitely relate Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. You get that division, you get that them and us, and that's not yes. what it's about. You know, you've yeah. got to, you're working together, you're part of a team, and it's really important to be that, you know, that open door policy. You know, having that visibility, it's, that's really key yeah. for me, and really important for me as well. No, absolutely, and it just strikes a brilliant chord with me. So, um, let's let's step into the question. Now, your questions I said to you off, off air are really easy to kind of set up for today because I want to be nosy about the steps. So we're going to yeah. kind of talk through the steps. So um, what brought you to the five steps of employee engagement? What kind of how did you get that vision or start off? Yeah. What, what kind of struck a chord? I think firstly, because I have my career has been in some really challenging industries, you know, I don't do things by heart, clearly. And, <laughs> uh, it, you know, I've worked in sort of low, uh, oh, sorry, high turnover, high absence, low morale, low paid, typically low paid environments. And it's tough. You know, these are yeah. challenging environments. A lot, of, you know, the, the, the front facing, the customer facing, and it can be, you know, quite upsetting yeah. for if you're in a food, you know, hospitality, if you're in a hotel or you're working food retail when customers, and we all know customers, unfortunately, can be very rude, aggressive yeah. at times. So, you know, you've got to be able to find ways to attract and retain those employees and yeah. value them and over the years I've developed these strategies that have helped me that I've implemented within the workplaces um, yeah. that I have been in and it's helped to increase morale, to uh, decrease uh, turnover, to decrease absences, and also grievances as well. It has all that yeah. knock-on effect. Um, and, you know, at the end of it, you kind of get a highly skilled, highly engaged um, team that feel valued and want to stay and have that loyalty towards a, to, towards yeah. their employer. Um, and, you know, the, the important thing here with these strategies is that it's not one person that implements them. It's everybody yes. that has to implement them. So, yeah. you know, I can work in an environment and I can put this into you know as much as I can. Yeah. But if it's not followed through from every single level, it won't work. So it's yeah. really important that you have buy in from everybody and that total buy in from from the top, yeah. basically. Yeah. And so from your you're saying there from your experience building it over a period of time, you've worked in some high kind of turnover industries, challenging yes. industry, and then you've built over time your five uh, yes. kind of stages of employer yeah. engagement. Um, yeah. And what gives you the biggest buzz then about employer engagement? So what, what kind of you go, oh, do you know what, that's brilliant that we've yeah. done that or say, what gives you the biggest buzz? I think it's it's you know obviously there's the data isn't there you can yeah. see the effect from you know low turnover low absence yeah. high you know engaged people surveys where they come out lots of people have participated and you get a high score but yeah. I think it's just the culture within the organization you yeah. can really see happy employees you can see people that are open to more development you can see people yeah. that feel valued because they're being recognized for their achievements yeah. and it's that team spirit I can't put a finger on it but it's you feel it you can walk yeah. into a company and you can feel the culture a positive yes. culture you can also walk into a, a, an environment and you can feel a negative culture you, you, yeah. you know you can it it's not tangible but you feel it you really do see it yes yeah. the stats talk for themselves um but it is really really important to kind of be able to feel that healthy happy yeah. environment when you walk into somewhere yeah and that's what i um, love that's what i see yeah. And I and I echo that. So working in the bank, working in so many different branches, I could walk into a branch and you feel the energy atmosphere. You know, it's a yeah. good branch. I don't need to look at the data that yeah. you could just kind of feel it. People are happy, smiley, waving. Yeah. Hello, Steve. Exactly. How are you? They're great. Yeah. I can go into another branch. It could feel as cold as anything. People are scuttling yes. away. Yeah. Not to. And you go and then you go, well, let's have a look at the data. And you go, well, you know, the evidence yeah. speaks for itself. Exactly. So, yeah, I think you and I um, echo exactly the same feeling there about Absolutely. we don't need the date you can feel it can't you 
And what you get with highly engaged employees and you, when you get that positivity mm. is that people want to go above and beyond. They want to yes. provide a better service to customers and clients, you know, and as a result, the company is more likely to be sort of more profitable. You know, stats show yeah. that with a highly engaged workforce, your business is likely to be 21, up to 21 percent more profitable. You know, that's yeah. nothing to be sniffed at at all. No. You know, this, the stats show, you know, that the, the figures speak for themselves in this. Yeah. And, you know, I don't I don't get it if, you know, when people say, oh, you know, I, and I hear this quite often. And I know some people say it in jest, but I don't yeah. get it when people say, oh, it'd be, you know, this company would be great if I didn't have empl- employees. Well, actually, your employees are making your business. Yes. Your employees are the yeah. people that yeah. are, you know, serving your customers and, and, you know, and putting the profit at the end of yeah. the year in, yeah. in, in the bank, you know. So it's about appreciating them for what they're yes. doing because – and, and, you know, and I, I say often to people, well, how much better do you think your performance as a business and your profit would be if you engaged, if you had a highly engaged workforce, you know, yes. if they were happy, if they yeah. want to go above and beyond? What difference do you think that's going to make at the end of the day to your bank balance, your yeah. business bank balance? And it's, it's almost like sometimes the light bulb moment goes off. Yeah. But I, I love to kind of talk about employee engagement because it's so critical and it's so key yeah. and with our current you know cost of living crisis even more so it's so yeah. so important to yeah. to be able to stand out from that next business you know you're going to have yes. a competitor right next to you and how are they managing to retain their employees yeah. and they've got a great you know happy workforce paying exactly the same wages or salaries yeah. but you know you're losing your employees well to be honest it's about engaged employees and it's yes. about culture that makes the vast difference really yeah. Yeah, you know, and, I've and, always and, said a salary. Sorry, I've always said a salary increase makes employees happy for perhaps yeah. a day. But what happens the other 364 days? You know, if they don't, yeah. if they're not communicated to, if they're not being recognised for their yeah. achievements, if they don't have a voice, that's going to be yeah. worthless. When I, I always look at the about hygiene factors and motivating factors, a pay rise, great one day and people live to their means, whereas the hygiene factors are so, so important about that recognition, reward, thankful, you know, uh, where I work is a good environment, you know, toilet rolls in the toilet, all those kind of things are so, so important for engaged oh. colleagues. Um, yeah, no, I think we're definitely aligned on this, Maria. I'm, you yeah. know, I'm going to be doing my brave heart <laughs> speech later uh, around that. So, um Guess yeah, what, as the audience are going to say to me, Steve, tell me about the questions. They're really easy. We're going to find about each step as we go through. Okay, so what's step one of the employer so, engagement? So the first step, sorry, I've got I've also kind of made some notes in case I kind of lost track here. But I investing think. in employees' careers is definitely the first one. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've always said that, you know, you not only are keeping ahead of the game with technology, yeah. with a skilled workforce, but, you know, you've got that succession plan in place. If you're building yeah. your team for the future, if somebody does decide to leave, you've got that backfill, you've got that succession yes. plan in, 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 you know, in the background, yeah. you've got somebody ready. Um, and sometimes employers or clients will say to me, well, you know, I don't have a job for that person to go to. And I said, well, be yeah. happy for them if they leave, because what yeah. you've done is you've created a yeah. manager of the future, you've invested in their careers, and they will appreciate that. They will look back yes. and go, okay, there's no place for me to develop because turnover yeah. is low and they can't create a management yeah. position for me. But actually, they're going to always appreciate the fact that you invested that time in them. So yes. don't look at it as something sad that they're leaving and that you don't want them to leave. Yeah. Look at it as, yes, it is sad that they're going because you, they're a great yeah. employee and you don't want to lose them. But they're going to take that skill and that knowledge and that you've given them, that yeah. you've provided and you've invested in them and they're going to flourish and they'll flourish yeah. somewhere where they can um and that's the way i look at it really so i think you know there there are there is a statistic that says that from a recent survey that employees that feel invested in yeah. um their loyalty will increase to 94 percent yes. to their employer that's a huge huge statistic isn't yeah. it that's 94 yeah. percent and you know if you don't have engaged employees um, you know, again, from the same um, survey, the UK engagement rate was 49%. Yeah. Um, so out of that, you know, 
more than half were not engaged yes. and from that 13 percent were actively disengaged so that means they're looking elsewhere for other jobs yeah. but in the meantime if they're not finding other jobs they are potentially feeling de- demoralized they're yeah. unhappy but they're also affecting other people around them. so you Correct. could have em- yeah. engaged employees it will bring their performance down it will bring the yeah. service that they're providing to the clients or customers yeah. down as well so it's really important about investing those time that time within your employees. So, yeah. you know, on the job training, coaching, mentoring, um, you know, qualifications, whether it's CIPD or yeah. or you know, any kind of accreditation, you know, it's investing that time in yeah. that employee and they will their 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 loyalty um percentage will, yeah. will increase because they feel that they're being invested in definitely. Yeah especially as well maria to re to recruit a new person i think acas figures to recruit a new person up to a six months is going to cost person twenty five thousand pounds so that's just recruitment that's... costs plus learning costs and yeah. getting them up to speed that's crazy, Whereas if you it? if you pay out for someone's development it could be a thousand pound five hundred pound whatever come on it, the, the costs are yeah. quite easy to work out yeah. there, there are no the brain, but too many organizations yeah absolutely. too many organizations that investment is vast isn't it to yeah they go well that's to your customers as well absolutely yes. It's, so it's, so I find know, that absolutely fascinating, totally agreeable. Uh, and the bit now is because of the recruitment part with most in the UK, people have got a bigger choice. They're going to so, walk, aren't they? If they don't get what they need, they are going to make that decision to go in that organisation over there. Yeah, OK, they're not going to pay me more money or maybe a little bit more, but this is going to give me a, a launch to move forward in my career development, those kind of things. Absolutely. And the other thing when I you know, get on my high horse here a lot of people want to do a good job but they want to get better at it they don't always want to move on or etc but quite a few organizations go well they've been here for there they just want to do a good job yeah but they can learn new skills become better at their job quicker efficient we've got to keep developing people haven't we constantly you've got to keep engaging them and keep challenging them and again that's a really good point there actually because I wrote about that in in an article at the beginning of the year that you know sometimes people will say well I've got this employee that's been here 10 years doesn't want to develop any further doesn't want to do anything different it's quite happy and that's great that's absolutely fine because you've got that loyalty from that employee and they're a great marketing tool for your employee you know look at this employee they're happy they're you know they enjoy working here and we've got that loyalty so this they're doing something right and and they say well how do I keep this person motivated and engaged well you know, you don't have to give them a different job role, of course, because no. they don't want that. But what you can do is perhaps involve them in the recruitment of people joining yes. their team. It yes. gives them that additional kind of responsibility. Yeah. And also um, being involved in uh, the induction of a new yes. employee as well. It's something slightly different to the norm within their role, yeah. but it keeps them engaged. It's something to look forward to. Yes. And what you're doing is you're saying to that employee, I trust you Correct. to do this because I know you're good yeah. at what you do. And I know that you're going to represent the, the company best, yeah. best, you know, uh, you know, as well. Um, yeah. And and that's that gives that person that makes that person feel valued um, yeah. as well. So yeah. I think, you know, investing in your employees' careers, it, it's a win-win situation, not just for the employee, but also yeah. for the company, but also for the customer at the end, yeah. because they're going to get a better quality of service with yeah. highly engaged employees, because they feel that that loyalty towards their employee, they want to do that yes. better, and they want to give that quality service as well. Yeah, and, and you can feel it, can't you? If that person enjoys that company, the service you get, a nice smile, how are you, conversation, etc. Uh, whereas yeah. there was a shop recently, my wife and I walked out because there wasn't even a smile. There wasn't even like, you know, great for us to be there. It was more grunts than that. And you're just thinking, yeah. I'm not sure you really enjoy the way you work, to be yeah. honest. So, yeah, really good, really good one. I wonder if we went to the same shop because we oh. had exactly the same at the weekend, funnily enough. So my husband and I um, went to it somewhere on Saturday morning and there was this young lad um, uh, and I, I don't know <laughs> whether he'd had a heavy night the night before, but yeah. he did not utter a word. Yeah. Uh, we had a grunt, but that was about it. And we both sort of said as we were walking out, great, you know, we really want to come here again. Yes. But it does, it shows when you represent your business well, yeah. you know, you're happy you're cheerful you're engaging you know your customers will talk about the poor experiences they might not necessarily talk so much 
openly about the good experiences but they will talk you know you, yeah. i can guarantee you know they'll go on to facebook yeah. they'll talk about it on you know page facebook pages they'll they'll talk about it to other employees other people other friends and families and that's bad bad yes. marketing yeah. <laughs> whereas yeah. you know you've well, got a great service that's brilliant you know yeah. and it is important to be that face and that image of yes. the company so it's someone yeah. that doesn't look particularly happy not really an ideal place for them to be no <laughs> definitely we, we're striking that off the family fortunes list of like uh, uh we don't want that uh there. Yeah, so uh, uh, um, that people are going to go steve where are you going to go with your next question i'd like to be nosy about step two so what's step yeah. two uh, okay so step engaging? two this is a nice easy one this is recognizing employees achieve, achievements so um you know and people often misinterpret this as oh giving them a pay rise or giving them a bonus and it isn't you know of yeah. course salary increase at the moment does help of course it does you know interest yeah. rates you know mortgages everything is costing everybody fuel prices you know it's it's crazy out there at the moment but it isn't about that yes that does help and yeah. if that is done it can't be done in isolation because that is just going to totally yeah. ruin the whole point of giving um, a salary increase and you know as I said to you off off um, at, before we joined the podcast, yeah. that a salary increase can make an employee happy for a day, but the yeah. other remaining 364 days, you know, if they don't feel valued and they don't feel invested yeah. in that, it, 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 they're in exactly the same spot other than yes. having a little bit extra of money at the end of the month. So, um, you know, again, uh, within a, a recent survey, it was a Gallup survey, I do believe, there was 58% of employees stated that giving recognition was the most effective way to improve employee engagement. You know, that's yeah. that's a big percentage, really. Um, yeah. And that, you know, employees will naturally put in more effort in their role and give back to within, you know, their performance yeah. if they feel recognised for their achievements. And these are really simple strategies. But low cost you know i'm not talking spending hundreds and you know yeah. or thousands on implementing all these you know company benefits yeah. i'm talking about some really really simple things and one of those is long service awards for example yeah. You know, it, it, you've you know, this. Unfortunately, these days people don't stay as long as they did yes. sort of 10, 20, 30 years ago. You know, you were in a job for life. You know, when I yeah. first started in employment, uh, all those years ago. Um, <laughs> but you know, these days people might move sort of after a couple of years. So recognizing yeah. when people are staying two, five, eight, yes. ten, fifteen years is a great way of recognizing that. You know, and I say to clients, you know, it can be something really simple, a certificate, a letter, a gift card, yeah. a meal out. You know, here's a hundred pounds yeah. for a meal. This is a gift card for this. But what I think is really good um, and just goes that one step further is actually giving employees an, you know, a choice of what they would yes. like. So, you know, you can say this is what we offer and you've got yeah. this, this, and this and asking them what they would like because they've got a choice then and it just engages yes. them even further. Um, yeah. So the other things, employee of the month. And now this one's also that can be a tricky one because it very much depends on the size of the organisation. Yeah. For a small business, it's not going to work because you're going to have the same people voting for yes. the same people. Yeah. Um, but what I suggest is aligning it to company values. Yeah, it's so it's good. not yeah, a case of, yeah, it's not a case of, oh, they went above and beyond or they did a great, great yeah. service to the customer or they're just a really great employee. It, it, it has yes. to be something more specific um so you're inviting employees to vote yeah. for or to submit votes for a particular yes. employee you know who they feel is worthy and i've always said align it to a company value so that it, right. it's recognizable that way yeah um some of the other things that i talk about um you know it could be again you know once in a blue moon let's take people out again it, it it's all budget sort of you know cost yes. sort of um permitting but uh take out for a meal or yeah. um having a few drinks after work um on on you know paid by the company yeah. or you know on the odd occasion say for example you're celebrating the end of a really challenging project let's get some pizzas in let's get yes. some pizzas let's do a buffet let's have a couple of drinks in the office as long as it doesn't go mad you know yes. that's a great you know recognition isn't it yes. for the team as a whole or a particular department yeah. I think what's important with this one is that it's consistent you don't yes. just do it 
and then you don't do anything for another six months. It needs to be regular and it needs yeah. to be sort of on a regular basis and consistent. Um, and I, I, you know, I think recognising people's in achievements is just really important because, you know, we we might all think, oh, uh, our, our employees are not really comfortable with that public recognition. Well, it doesn't have to be public. It, yeah. co- it could be a letter or an email that's sent to yes. that employee. It doesn't have yeah. to be a great big presentation in, in front of yeah. everybody. It can be, you know, and I think a great um, way of recognising is posting something on social media as well, with a picture yeah. of the employee or the team, and just publicly recognising them that way. That's that's another very effective way. And employees will work harder. They will put in yeah. more if they're feeling that, that their hard work is being recognised. Um, yeah. They're not going home at the end of the day and go, oh, I did a really, really tough job and no one thanked me for it. You know, sometimes yeah. a thank you is all that's enough in these situations. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's it, um, the, the bit on there as well, Maria. So I work with organisations around disk profiling. So, uh, and really get organisations to tailor how they can recognise people. So, yeah, my personality likes, you know, recognition in public, you know, in front of people. Great. I love yeah. that. It gives me a real Absolutely. buzz. But we've got other people that are more introverted would like. Pro- so really tailoring the approach Absolutely. will then kind of um, bring that employer again. You know, you, you know who I am. Yes. And that, that's the kind yeah. of it. But yeah, recognition. And I think going back to yeah. too many people forget about a thank you. Yeah. So and actually the bit for me is saying thank you for what that person's done exactly. means more rather than just oh thanks. What's yeah. that? We're saying actually thank you for putting the extra hours in or you've given up that time from your family. Those people go, oh, yeah. do you know what? You know, you know me. Yeah. Yeah. It loses its value if you say it, but you don't really mean it. You've got right. to associate it with what they've done to to, yes. to 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 achieve or to, you know, to get that thank you, really. Yes. You know, if you're particular you know, and then the employee's perspective as well, that they know then that you've recognize the fact that they did a great job on that particular yes. um task or that particular project or that you handled that particularly challenging client or yeah. customer really well you know it's not just thank yeah. you for your hard work today because that will lose its value if it's yes, done every correct. single day yeah. it has to be linked to something a specific task yeah. or a specific project as well yeah. Um, so there's lots of different ways of um, yeah. recognising people's achievements. And, you know, I've given sort of three or four examples there that they don't yeah. cost the earth. They really don't no. cost the earth. Um, yeah. But they are It's very, just about being thoughtful, effective. isn't it? Being thoughtful and aware that has the importance of it, isn't it? Totally. Yeah, and it is. So what what would um, the step three lead on to? So we've got we've got um, colleague careers, recognition and achievements. What would step three so step into. three is involve your employees. And, um, you know, there is one that it could be quite sort of um, a bit of an over, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, but a, a little bit of grey into the next one. But yeah. the involve your employees is very much about not just asking the employee for the occasional idea or suggestion, yes. but it's collaborative approach. Yeah. So, good. for example, you know, help the you know, employees um working with you as a manager or a company yeah. to set their goals set the strategy set their kpis for example you know yeah. we're not saying there you go take a piece of paper and sort out you know yes. what, what you want to achieve over the next 12 months but working collaboratively to set some realistic time yeah. scales some realistic um kpis for example and realistic goals yeah. and you know these it makes it's it's giving the employee responsibility and accountability for their own development and for their yes. own achievements as well yeah, um, and overall success of the business isn't it you know yeah. if the employees are involved in those decisions then they're going to own it and they're going to yes. do the work yeah. to get to that point, really. Yeah. Um, you know, sharing ideas, suggestions, um, you know, and again, I've always said you can share, you can ask your employees and you can yeah. open up the floor to ask and involve employees. But if you don't do anything about it, again, it loses its value yeah. and it won't work because employees will give up. And over time, yes. they'll go, well, what's the point of that? Um, so I've always said, you know, if you're asking people for their ideas, if you're asking people to be involved, then take those ideas on board. Those ones that, yes. that you know, are um, workable and are feasible absolutely take them on board yeah, yeah. um 
you know, and it does kind of have a little bit of um, overlap into the next one, but uh, sorry, some you of carry the on. ideas. With, with natural okay. follow-up. But, but this is also about, you know, open, transparent communication. So it works both yeah. ways. So where in my last role, well, my last two roles, actually, I set up um, a, a, a monthly newsletter. Yeah, so good. one of the things that people always talk about is that, you know, when you look at annual salaries, engagement surveys, sorry, I should say, one of the big things that comes out of it is that they don't feel employees don't feel communicated, yes. that they don't know what's going on in the business. Yeah. So this newsletter um, was designed to share news, to share sort of the vision, yes. share the progress of the business. Now, I, I'm not talking give, you know, all the intricacies of you know yes, yeah. how the business is performing, but the top line, really. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, it's another forum for sharing and recognising yeah. achievements, yeah. you know, employee of the month. You know, this person's done completed yes. 15 years. Fantastic. This is great. You know, and recognize, you know, cer- certain um, days of recognition, you know, uh, uh, you know, happy Father's Day, you yes. know, you can kind of put that and include that. But also what I encourage is the MD or the CEO yes. for him or her to um, have a briefing with employees as well yeah, and yeah. share yeah. information around the business. And again, asking for ideas and asking yes. for suggestions. Um, something else that I think is really quite key within the business, if um and I've done these projects over a couple of um, companies that I've worked for that they've wanted to look at their vision, their mission, yes. and also set some company values. If you're doing that, it's absolutely worthless if a group of directors are sitting in a room and going, yep, yeah, that, 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 let those yeah, yeah, are yeah. four values, let's share it with our employees. It, it you know, It's not going to engage your employees. They're not going to own it. They're not going to yes. drive it involving your employees around what does this business mean to you what does a good job mean to you what do you see as your own personal values and how does that align with the company and then working with the employees and groups you know you're like focus groups of designing the um the values the company core values that way you're going to have employees better engaged and driving them on a daily basis if they have been involved in creating them you know it's great you know to see that these values were designed with the employees you know they're the ones that are designed it um so you know you're you're more likely to get people behind that and driving that forward if you're asking them to design it as well well it's, it's it's interesting as well maria i remember going back in my career sometimes we had the values and they were a mouthful so they weren't like <laughs> easy to work out but we, yeah. we were tested on them so it wasn't demonstrating the values mm. it was could you recite the values so mm. you didn't really practice it and you were never judged on how you practice it whether you could recite them and that's yeah. just missing a point again if if you can involve employees um and it's not i've found over my career if you give people a voice they may yeah. not agree you may not implement but they've got a voice to say i've actually had a contribution i put something into it um yeah. and i also wanted to touch on the point you said earlier about um the kind of ceos or members listening or focus groups or doing something about what the colleagues say i've experienced so many times over the years where people have had focus groups they've done nothing with it and sometimes at the end of the focus group they've gone right we're going to do this and they've not listened to a single and i think you've just missed the point and that genuineness has gone and trust Yeah, pe- employees will not contribute if they don't feel that they're being listened. They will yeah. give up. And it's the same thing with um, uh, employee engagement surveys. It, it absolutely undermines the whole point of doing them if you yeah. don't, you do nothing with the results at the end of it. Yes. If you don't then speak to employees, you look at action plans and you actually revisit them and you, yeah. you know, you you work through them. You share the results. Yes. You know, I, I, I'm shocked at how many organisations don't share the results of their em- engagement yeah. surveys. And I'm thinking, well, what's the point of that? People want to yes. know what the results are. They want to know that they're feeling the same way as the next person and yes. the next person. Yeah. And what are you as a company going to do yeah 
about it. So yeah. it's really, really important whenever I have facilitated or managed um, staff surveys, yeah. employee engagement surveys, in ha- when I've worked uh, in, yeah. in, as an employee, I, that one of the big things that I always said, and, you know, past managers or past employees yeah. and colleagues will always tell you is that I've said there is absolutely no point in doing this if all you're going to do is here's the results and then you're going to put it in a drawer and don't visit yes. it for 11 months Correct. until the next year yeah. <laughs> it's completely worthless and it's a waste yes. of money if yeah. you're having an external provider yes. that is managing that process so it's really really important to share the results first of yes. all um and employees will not be honest if you don't do that and if you don't right. involve them and you're not demonstrating the actions that you're taking yeah. because they'll just say what's the point next year and then the year yeah. after they just like well no one's listened to us for the right. last five years i'm not going to bother and yeah. then they don't participate and yeah. then the company will then be saying oh well, we've only got 15 percent of our employees yes. that have completed a survey well there's your reason why <laughs> yes. so you know yeah. it's, it's about that open and transparent yeah. communication and and also building up, you know, a bit of a momentum beforehand yeah. that, you know, this is what we're going to do. And we yes. want you to complete it because we want you to be honest. Yeah. And, you know, it's that build up before of communication. Yes. And this is what we're going to do. And if you say it, do it. Yeah, correct. No, absolutely spot on. And what would be step five, the last one, bringing it together? What would be that yeah. one? Um, so the next one uh, is giving employees a voice, actually. And this is a two step kind of approach, really. And yeah. it provides employees with the platform to feedback. So, again, that's where kind of the bit of the overlap, the previous yes. one. But the platform for feedback, firstly, and secondly, to actually listen and use the feedback given by employees. Yeah. Um, you know, suggestions and ideas in a suggestion box, for example, Um, employee engagement surveys we just talked about. And another thing is kind of, you know, sometimes when directors are having board meetings is have a slot at the end or at the beginning of a board meeting to invite employees to ask questions and to, you know, discuss things or a particular project, you know, you're going to get all the directors together. We all know sometimes in a larger organisation where you've got a number of people yeah. in your leadership team who are directors that they're very, very busy. They're not yeah. always in the office. But this is the time to get them together. This is a perfect opportunity yes. to yeah. invite people in. You know, it doesn't have to be many. You know, it could be five people, yeah. one from each department, for example, and just ask them, you know, yes. let's talk about this or this a particular subject I'd like to discuss. Yeah. And it only needs to be a 30 minute task. Like, yes. need to take yeah, over the board yeah. meeting and I tell you what employees feel so valued by being asked yeah. to do that because they they see and they get that the company value their opinions and want right. to listen to them yeah. so it has a massive massive impact and you know by doing this people you know employees will feel valued and then they yeah. will continue to provide and share their ideas and suggestions yeah. to you know because they, they feel like they're being heard yeah so it's a great it's a great way of um, having, you know, by employees having that voice. It's a great way of yeah. increasing engagement because they feel invested within the business as well. Yeah. And it goes back to which is a, just a, a similar similarity when people go for job interviews. I always say to people, it's a two way process. Yes, it's it not just being you know interrogated by and this is the same thing about involved what you're saying there Marie is bringing the colleagues in it's two ways we can it's a win-win approach we get to listen yes. to your views um, totally. and it's so many great CEOs some really good CEO board members that surround themselves with really good strong people or different people that have a different view from them so they yeah. can give ideas and they grow the business keep growing Absolutely. Whereas, where I see narrower CEOs that will only surround themselves with people that will say yes to them mm-hmm. and actually they don't want people's views so that survey because that's not what they want to hear exactly so it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy doesn't it but I just think Absolutely. the more you can surround yourself with views yep. the better it's going to be and I've experienced that firsthand definitely yeah. and that's when a business there's a difference between a business flourishing and a business that just won't grow it will stay the same yes. or it won't it won't succeed at all yeah. because you know why employ people to do these 
specific roles and pay them <clears throat> excuse me pay them good money yeah. when you're not inviting them to and asking them and you, you're not listening yes. to them you're not valuing their opinions you know they're experienced in that role or yeah. in that knowledge and that skill for a reason you know they've been doing right. it for x amount of years and if you're not open to that um feedback your business is not going to succeed yes. at all yeah. and, um, and you know I've, I've also said you know there's that psychological safety as well yeah, so yeah, there is yeah. obviously about sort of ensuring a healthy workplace and culture yeah. so employees want to be able to feel that they can speak up and they can yeah. have an opinion without um fear of persecution a uh, yes. fear of you know yeah. of something happening because they've spoken up you know people go oh, I don't I don't want to say anything because I'm a bit worried yeah. about you know how that's you know going to look on me well if you're setting this safe environment yes. and you're creating a culture that's safety um people won't feel that fear and they yeah. will feel that they can challenge and involve um themselves and they can ask these things um but also with you know with regard to a healthy work environment you know there are again it doesn't have to cost anything but there are yes. some really simple ways of it's not just about somebody's health and well-being you know there are things that will cost a business such as like an employee assistance program or yeah. counseling yeah. sessions if somebody's going through a particularly yeah. difficult time but there are some really simple things which go a long long way you know i believe it was timpsons the owner of timpsons that yeah. put in this really really simple idea of giving grandparents that when a grandchild was being born a day off a paid day off yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was like it's amazing you know and as an yes. employee how valued are you going to feel that you're yeah. getting an extra day off to see you know your yeah. grandchild on you know when they've been born yeah. or just after they've been born that's a special moment and yeah. you know some other ideas you know starting a bit later for a parent of a child that's starting their first day at school yeah. that's yeah. a really important day yeah. And can be quite upsetting, quite emotional, a bit of a roller coaster yeah. for parents. And why why do they have to, they don't have to take the whole day off? Yes. Why don't they just come in a bit later and you pay them yeah. for it? You know, that goes a long way from an employee's yeah. perspective that, you know what, my employer really cares about me. Yes. They really yeah. understand and they really care. So they will give back more as a result of that. Yeah. So these are some really, really simple things um, that, yeah. that have a highly effective way yes. of increasing employee engagement yeah and it's a bit there of it works both ways so if organizations that are listening today some people say to me even the work i do oh steve that's so soft that's so nice etc no the things we do are good for our employees good for the yeah. colleagues good for the customer and good for the produ productivity of the organization they all link yeah. don't they they all do absolutely yeah. and yeah. you know the, the figures and, and the data will speak for itself. You know, yeah. if you're increasing, you know, employee engagement, if you're doing these, you know, if not all, but at least some of these strategies, and then you start to see your, um, you know, your, the, the number of grievances that yes. are going to be lowered. Yeah. Um, if you're going to see your absence levels uh, decrease, you're going to see yeah. your retention levels increase and you are going to then become an employer where people are going to talk about you. That, oh, that's a really nice place to work for. And employees will always share their experiences. Yes. So if you are an employer that has, you know, not listened to employee, not invested that time, not recognised, they will talk about that to the employee, yeah. you know, their, their circle of friends who then talk about it to their circle yes. of friends. There's, you know, things such as Glassdoor, there's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, yeah. you know, there's that social media platform now that people can talk about these and make yeah. these comments about your business. It's very, very open nowadays. Yes. And you don't want to get that reputation. You don't want your reputation of your business to be damaged. So by creating these and um, following you know, yeah. if not all of these, but most of these strategies, people are going to talk about what a great employer you are and they're yes. going to want to work for you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a great way to attract employees and especially, yeah. you know, when your competitors are trying to do yes. their best, you know, whether it's increasing salaries, it's not about yeah. that. It's about no. being that employer of choice, as I call yeah. it. 
And so that I've grabbed everything here from my perspective, we said about kind of step one is colleague careers. Step two, looking at recognition achievement. Step three is about involving employees. Um, step four is about transparent communication. And then step five, if I grab that right, that's about um, having the colleagues voice so that they're involved from that point as well. Or have I well, missed something uh, yeah, there? Or? The three and four is slightly mixed up. So yeah, oh. the invested employees careers is one. Re step two is recognising employees achievements. Step three is involve your employees. Yes. Step four is giving employees a voice. And then step five is ensure a healthy work environment. Wonderful. So it's about building that culture of people being open and yes, being great. able to speak up. Yeah, fantastic. And we always get asked, Maria, um, uh, kind of on the podcast, what self-development are you working on for 2023? What's are you haven't looked to develop yourself? Oh, so I, uh, having set up my own business, it's been yeah. a really, really busy few months, actually, and it's getting yeah. very, very busy. So for me, I always keep up to date with the CIPD um, yeah. sort of online uh, sessions that I can get involved in. Um, I'm also part of various um, HR Facebook sites. So I'm always yeah. looking at there, you know, asking yes. questions, answering questions. And so it just yeah. gives, raise your awareness, really. Yes. Um, but there's some really good um, organisations that set up sort of these bite-sized sessions to yes. develop myself. Um, last year, uh, I also became a, an associate member of the Institute of Leadership and Management. Um, Excellent. So yeah. that would be something that I want to develop yeah. as well. Um, but I also, yeah, so sort of I've started sort of uh, from a coaching perspective. Yeah. Um, but uh, I also in the last couple of years, uh, I'm an in-house uh, mediator, trained mediate, work, yeah. workplace, sorry, uh, mediator as well, yeah. which I've utilised quite recently with a couple of clients yeah. um, and their employees. Um, but for me, yeah, it's very much about sort of the business really and developing yes, yeah. the business, um, yeah. but also keeping on top of employment law and understanding yeah. and making sure that the advice that I'm giving is is, yes. is accurate, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, no, it's a complex world, very complex it world. It is, definitely. So um, from, from my point of view, I just want to say a big thank you today. You've been wonderful and I really appreciate uh, your honesty. And I know you and I would uh, definitely made a really good connection for, you know, building our relationship, which is wonderful. Um, yeah. How can people get hold of you, Maria? So to make contact or reach out to you, what's the best way? Yeah, OK, so it could be either visiting my website. So it's www.saxonhrconsultancy.co.uk or by email um, maria.wilson at saxonhrconsultancy.co.uk. Uh, um, but also telephone. <laughs> yes. 01795 390 010. So there's all my contact details there. <laughs> Fantastic. And also Maria's missed out there because where we, we made contact was through LinkedIn. So catch out with Maria on LinkedIn as well. She does some fabulous yes. posts, real honesty, some really yes. good stuff. So I would reach out to Maria there as well. So can I just say a huge thank you for today yeah. uh, being our guest on our show. Um, and uh, I just look forward to with your post, but also seeing where the future goes for both of us. So I really appreciate it coming uh. on today, Maria. Thank you very much, Stephen, and thank you for inviting me. And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. So thank you. You're very welcome.